Greetings and welcome to Stunt Hanger Video Hangouts. My name is Charles Carter and I'll be your host this evening. I want to extend to you my gratitude for you watching Stunt Hanger Video Hangouts. If you're watching this as a replay, I want you to know that I host these YouTube live streams every Monday and Friday evening starting at 6.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So please make a note, make a note of this, excuse me, so you can watch or be part of the live stream. Plus, we have an after party following the live stream, which is sometimes better than the live stream portion. You must be a registered Stunhanger Forum member to find the link to be part of the live stream and the following after party. Here at Stunhanger Video Hangouts, we talk about building and flying model airplanes, sport flying, competition flying, and what you've been doing lately. To join our conversation, if you are already a member of the Stunhanger Forum, you can find the link if you scroll down to the section called At the Bench. Now, if you're not a member or if you're not logged into Stunhanger Forum, the At the Bench link will not appear now by the way at the bench is right below in memory of our friends now if you're not a member please register at stunhanger.com forward slash s m f that's stunhanger.com forward slash s m f that's smart men flying that's courtesy of jeff riley you must place a space between your real first and last name when you register you must also use a valid email address or Sparky, the proprietor of Stun Hanger will not approve you. Now, if you're inclined to not come in, but just enjoy watching us on YouTube, wonderful, fantastic. You can enter your questions or comments in the chat box over here, and I'll do my best to make those comments or questions a part of the show. And understand, sometimes even I can't get a word in myself. So be patient, and I will ask the illustrious panel your question or state your comment. And by the way, you only can make your comments or questions known during a live stream. So like I said earlier, I host these YouTube live streams every Monday and Friday evening starting at 6.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you find the Stun Hanger video hangouts that I host or the many building videos that, that Sparky does on this platform, informative and enjoyable, please hit the thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. It won't cost you a penny to do that. That helps the analytics of the show. Please consider subscribing. That doesn't cost you a dime either. Share the videos, comment on the videos. All these activities help the Stunhanger YouTube channel grow. Please also consider joining Stunhanger's YouTube channel memberships, which start at just $4.99 a month, which is less than 17 cents a day. And by the way, I'm a member myself. I have the $4.99 come out of my own checking account each and every month, and I don't miss it, and I suspect you won't either. Plus, you'll be supporting your hobby. I mean, this is, what we do is so unique, and I'd be ashamed for the world to have missed it just because we didn't we didn't invest in it, you know, because I, I, I loved it as a kid, and I still enjoy it and love it as an adult. There's nothing else like this hobby where you feel the plane. You feel, and you have to use it to build it, and it's just a lot to it that's, that's that, uh, that is great. Anyway, I can go on and go on, and that's why I host this show, because I love it so much. Now, another way you can show your support is using the Super Chat, which is over here below the chat box, the like big dollar sign. That's not a subscription. You can donate any amount you like. The only caveat is you need to be here. You need to be in the live stream. So come on in during those times, like I mentioned, and make a donation, and then maybe come back and watch the replay like a lot of people do at a more convenient uh, time and place for you to do it. Now, by the way, this is Sparky's. Oh, wait, wait one last thing. Um, now, with your YouTube memberships, you get access to member-only videos. Sparky has quite a few of those. And he has, and throughout his shows, you know, he's always asking, you know, do you have any questions? Or, I mean, so there's a lot of great value for the membership, you know? So what I was gonna say is that this is Sparky's YouTube channel. This is not mine. I have the privilege to host the show. And I come in, and I host the show. I set it up to stream on YouTube. And but this is not my channel. So if you want to get in touch with me, if you have a question or comment about the show, or you just have a question, you can reach me at my YouTube channel, which is called Flying Control Line Stunt. That's Flying Control Line Stunt. 
if you will, locate the 2019 AMA National Championship video, which is a video that Sparky shot with his video camera of me flying his beautiful Junar XL. And it was a, it's a beautiful plane. It's uh, light. When I flew it, it was orange. I think now it's more of a white color. He refinished it just to tell you how good of a plane that was that he wanted to refinish it. So if you locate that, that video, that channel, my channel, um, I, and if you make a comment or question, see, I will get notified. I don't, I don't get notified on, on Sparky's channel because this is not my channel. So if you make a comment or question on my channel, I'll be notified and be able to respond to you quickly. I want to thank you for your past, your present, and future support. You are making it happen. Please keep the conversations family and friendly. In other words, please don't do anything or say anything you would do around your children or grandchildren. And without any further ado, I'm now going to post the link at Stunhanger Forum. Let me go there now and post that link. And uh, it is posted right right now. I like saying that. I know it's not proper English, but I love saying that right now. Right now. So I'm going to now go to uh, what I call the control panel. And I need to go to Sparky's YouTube. And I have keys to the kingdom. And uh, so let me go there now. Uh, I can go invade Sparky's space. And let's see here. I'm on my way there. Hope everybody had a good weekend. I was uh, working on my, I have a Brodak Cardinal ARF that was missing in lead out. And um, I've been thinking about how to repair this for the longest time. And I finally got around to it. And uh, I was hoping to be able to do a show and tell, but uh, man, this day just got away from me, I tell you. So um, I didn't, I need to get the pictures and images off my phone onto my PC. Uh, so I can um, share. So that's what the problem is. Um, looks like Lynn is making his way in here. Let's see here. Hey, Lynn Burrell. Hey there. How are you, Charles? I'm doing well, man. Good to see you. Where is everybody? Well, you know, I'm a little bit late. That's maybe why, but I think they'll be here. Okay. But it's great great to have you in first. That's great. Yeah, that, that's a surprise. <laughs> Well, that must mean you had a good weekend, huh? I had a pretty good weekend. You betcha. Good. Did some good. fly. Did some flying today. It was good. All right. That's that's what I like to hear. Yeah. Brad and I got out to the field today in Stewart, and we flew for a few hours. It was good. Uh, what What did you take out to fly? Uh, I just had an old Buster. I had a I had a big stunter, but I'm having some engine trouble with it, so. It uh, needs a, a tank replacement. I brought it home, took the motor out of it, put it on a block, ran it, ran fine at home, but it won't run in the airplane because the tank's okay. probably 20 years old and not plumbed very well and just a problem. Right. It's an, it's an airplane that I inherited, so some of those have problems. I understand. Oh, yeah. I do. <laughs> Inherited airplanes have inherent problems. They do. Yeah, people, yeah. Give, people give them to you because they don't see the value in it anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or they think it's just the world's greatest airplane. And yet, uh, no, <laughs> not quite there. Yes. Hey, Dennis, how are you, Dennis? Dennis. Howdy. All right. Well, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Let me catch up on the uh, chat box. Looks like Daniel Berry Sports Highlights. Soup. That's what he said. So normally he says, yo. And then Dennis Adamiston, who is um, who is a member of our YouTube channel. I can tell by the moniker next to his name. And it says, don't forget to leave a like, everybody. Thank you, Dennis. Appreciate that. And then the T-Bones 1260. He says, done, Dennis. That's AKA Tom Luciano. And uh, then Terry Mitchell, he says, hey, Charles, hello from Oregon. Thanks for doing this, love it. Hey, I, I love it too. I'm so glad you appreciate it. That's, uh, that's, that's great. And Terry Mitchell, keep the questions coming. I, I, you really contributed to the show hey, last week. And I really appreciate I'm it. Hearing, I'm hearing a bunch of different conversations here. Is uh, Len? 
Okay, hang on. It must just be just hearing something. a bunch of conversations here, I'll, I'll just, uh, simultaneously I'll just mute my, here. Hang on. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. I didn't even notice. But you, you probably wasn't the only one who noticed that. So appreciate it. Anyways, uh, you know, Dennis, uh, you know, I know I've shared with you my progress and uh, but I didn't get a chance to transfer those pictures to my PC between ripping around and picking up my daughter, taking her to work and and other things in the household. I just did not get to it. And then I was tired, took a nap. An old man's nap today. So, <laughs> so I, I didn't get it done. But I, I may, hopefully I'll have it ready for Friday. But I'm excited to share it with everybody. And Jonathan Karadis, who's also a member of our channel. Thank you, Jonathan. And he says, hi, Charles. No link posted. What? No Tell link try posted. It. Tell him to update. Do an update on your screen. Yeah, do a refresh on your screen. It's there. It might not have been. I was running a little bit late. I looked up and I saw the clock. I'm like, oh, my God. I had to hurry up and get the show going. So that might, you might have just been there. Uh, on time and I was just a little late so sorry about that hey Gary how are you doing Gary good good to yeah, see you caffeine. how's everybody there we're doing good we're doing good all right hey caffeine how you doing caffeine hi I'm I'm doing good great 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 so uh Lynn, Lynn and I was just talking about how he went flying and uh, then he um ended up flying your buster is that right yeah, I just flew a Buster today because the other airplane wouldn't work. I have an inherited airplane that I was fighting with, so I just put it back in the car before I broke it. <laughs> it's all good. You know, I'm a. Uh, I would like to fly a Buster again. I flew a Buster when I was younger. I was one of the. That might have been the third or fourth plane I built was a Buster. I really wasn't impressed with it, and I really think in hindsight it was just because it was tail heavy. And it's like anything else, if they're if they're set up right, they fly pretty darn decent. Yeah. So I just would like to give a Buster a second look because I really did not know what I know now, and I just yeah. uh, you know I just basically built kits and flew them off the bench, and they didn't fly good. I just thought it wasn't a good plane. I didn't know anything about. I saw the the uh, symbol for the um, CG, and I would kind of do my best. I usually put my fingers on the end end of the wingtip. It that way as opposed to bringing your fingers close to the fuselage i think it's better to do it that way because it's kind of hard if there's a taper to get it right and um but i just did not know any better so it's, i'd like to give that plane a second chance none of us did it's what <laughs> we just didn't know just didn't know and sometimes you don't know what you don't know that you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> or exactly. something like that yes <laughs> So Dennis, uh, I called Dennis this morning and I heard a PA-75, I think it was Larry Fruits was flying a uh, velvet. Yeah. Is that right? Man. That's, that's it. Not... That's it. Yeah, I missed I missed Charles' call, so I called him right back. And uh, and first thing he says is, you're at the bottle field. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough. Which I was happy for that. Yeah, it was, we had a really pretty day to fly and Larry was flying. He's got a PA 65 on a pipe that oh, runs like a watch and the thing I'm sure was going, coming right loud over the phone, loud and proud. So, uh, but that thing runs extremely well and, uh, there he's flying it very well. And then the airplane, the velvet is, uh, uh, Wesley Dick's airplane with the, uh, the, the double slotted flaps mm -hmm. and, uh, Larry's is unusual because he built it with a plain set of flaps also, and he actually test flew it that way. Flew it, thought the airplane flew pretty well, and then he put the double slotted flap on it. He thought it flew a little better. So, but it's become his favorite airplane. And uh, so he's, uh, he's very, very happy, you know, the, the way it's working. Of course, you know, having a PA, it, 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 his airplane is 57 ounces, which makes it lighter than any OS's. 57 ounces with a PA 65 is usually a pretty good formula for success, too. So, oh, yeah, that's that sounds like a killer plane with that yeah. all that power. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, now does that excite you or kind of make you hungry to, to finish your velvet? 
seeing that it well. is yeah i mean i've I've seen lurries fly and i know i really really like it and everything like that i just haven't been able to get it and generate any uh any any workshop energy shall we say and yeah i made the fatal mistake here i'm trying to finish up the that corsair and in the process i actually picked up the bearcat again and uh trying to you know make parts for multiple airplanes i'm trying to make a rear push rod for the corsair and to I had one piece of carbon you know left over and stuff so i thought gee if i just work this right here i can make a push rod for the bearcat at the same time and so i've got that drag that one out and of course it'll all all work out in the end and everything like that but it's like ah, this happens every time i pick up multiple projects you know i'm just really better off if i just do one and run it right into the ground and then get the next one but that's no fun in doing that so yeah, plus we, we get so tempted. I get tempted by or excited mm -hmm. by something else, some little wrinkle. Like, oh, let me pursue that. That'd be fun. And you and I can justify saying, well, I'm also doing these two at the same time. You know, rationalize. I have all the equipment out, all the mm -hmm. all the adhesives, all the glues, all the you know hardware. Got the tools out. You know, so let me just knock these two out, right? So that's it. That's it. So it looks like Jonathan found the hidden link, huh? So <laughs> hey Jonathan. Yeah, it wasn't there. And then it was. <laughs> yeah. I, I I did the same thing, Jonathan. I just keep hitting the refresh button until it until it pops up. So yeah. I do feel bad when I'm running late. I know that there are people there. Uh, I like to think that there are people there waiting for the link to show up and they're waiting for me to to post it. So I I, I sorry about that inconvenience. And let me uh, welcome, uh, and I get back to you, John. Let me welcome Howard Rush. How you doing, Howard? Okay. And yeah, you were also one of the people I shared some images with on my um, uh, on my uh, repairing of the lead out. Did you happen to check your your phone? I looked at it a little bit. They're little on the phone. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe if you if you click on it, then you can then you can actually um, do a gesture mm -hmm. and make it big so you can actually look at it. I could, yes. <laughs> very good, very good. So, what 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 are you doing, Howard? I'm I'm uh, labeling drawers. Oh, that's a good idea. I've seen parts of your shops. I can only could imagine it. That's very helpful. Mm. Oh, it is at my age, yes. Say it again. It, it's helpful at my age. Yeah. And it'd be, helpful good when I come visit, it'd be helpful when I come visit you also. That's it. You got to know where all the good stuff is <laughs> when you go open and, uh, to yeah. poking around. So yeah, I ask first, I go, oh, can I, can I look in this drawer? Yeah. I got some good headings for you, Howard. <laughs> I, Howard, I got some good headings for you for labeling your drawers. Yes. Stuff, stuff and more stuff. Yeah, I've, I've got, I, I have some drawers labeled like that, uh, et cetera, Polanius, uh, other. Yeah, thank you. Stuff, doodads, and, and whatnots, yeah. And Charles, I'd like to know if Gary's going to share those chips with us. Yeah, what, what are you eating now, Gary? All these hot fries. Here, eating that with me. Oh, thank uh, you so <laughs> much. <laughs> what a guy. What <laughs> brought enough for everybody. Mine tastes yeah. like nothing. <laughs> so fresh. <laughs> See, I didn't have a chance to make popcorn. That's why I was running oh. late. Oh, oh yeah. man, so that's like, serious. Yeah, no calories, like, no calories in popcorn. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. That's true. But that, mm. what that means is I might talk more. I think. See, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I also have the popcorn so that I just. Focus on hosting and not talking. <laughs> so that's why I have the popcorn. Mm. Jonathan Miller's in the house. All right. Yeah. Hey, Jonathan. Hi. I mean, hey, John, how are you doing? Jonathan <laughs> Car Caratus and then John Miller. How are you doing, John? Yeah, I'm doing well. All considered. Look at this. Cut the mm -hmm. Oh, you got the bandage off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Look at that. Oh, that little, is, yeah. Put it back on, please. Short <laughs> statement. Short statement. <laughs> that is neat. That is neat. 
So now you got to just do it more emphatically when you want to tell someone they're number one. I can do it very slyly. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I don't know. My uh, my older brother, Dave, uh, he lost an argument with a radial arm saw when he was younger, and he lost, uh, lost a couple of his fingers. Oh. And his middle finger was like one joint long and he would he would just tell people you don't even deserve the best <laughs> All right. i remember yeah. that line <laughs> yeah that's it that's Very good. it so i let me get back to jonathan karatis so what have you been up to jonathan uh, besides well, writing actually, more poetry so oh well i yeah i um Keith, Keith Trossel uh, asked if uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge um, the poem that sort of um, inspired me to write that one about the tether. And I said, mm. certainly. <clears throat> so I um, got a copy from him and I couldn't, for some reason, I couldn't get the damn thing to stick on um, um, stun hanger. So I, mm. I typed it out myself and tried to sort of format it and uh, send it off. And uh, I did the same with my poem and it worked okay for a, a week. And his one worked okay yesterday for a day. And then I went back on oh, last evening here, probably about midnight your time. And uh, the thing had gone all haywire and mine had as well. It had jumped lines and rearranged itself. You could still read it and make sense out of it, but it didn't flow the same. Hmm. Um, so that was a bit of a shame. But um, I actually flew yesterday out of my flying oh, chair. Uh, just about decapitated myself because I couldn't get out of the way. Oh. Um, I, had, I had three flights, and on one of them I was climbing out into wind out of inverted. I managed to get a bit of inverted done in the chair which is a bit tricky with the footwork but yes uh, months to go yet before i get this hip done and i thought <clears throat> a lovely day I'll give it a go i was climbing out inverted and uh the motor just coughed a bit and um into wind so the wing flipped over and she came in towards me flew, oh, around, no. my, flew around my head and past my left shoulder and I thought, oh, well, it's in the lap of the gods. And I knew the model was quite stable and it would straighten out. And sure enough, it did. And it hit the ground before it got to the end of the, the lines uh, behind me. And uh, I saw it hit the ground. It hit the ground at about a 30 degree angle. It had almost recovered. And uh, no damage, just bent the undercarriage. So I was really happy. Oh, I bet. But I managed to do some lazy eights and loops and a bit of inverted. But uh, I haven't got a back on my chair, so if I try and get too carried away, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll fall out of the damn thing. But I might get Gerald, I might talk to Gerald about welding up a, a back for me so I can lean back a bit. And uh, we had a good day yesterday. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, but we found a field that's had good drainage and uh, sand to put on it. And um, you can actually drive onto the thing. Um, and we had a good day. It was half a dozen of us or more flew. We had a good time. And uh, later on, uh, when the others have had a go, I've got some, uh, I think I might be able to jump across and show you some photos of the stuff. Oh, that'd be great. That would really yeah. be good. I, I look forward to it. Got a video of my grandson flying a little electric job uh, too. So I'll try and get that stuff to go, but I'm not very good with this sort of stuff. So we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, that'd be fine. Have you uh, yeah. ever seen that that flying chair? It's called the flying chair. Have you ever seen that? Uh, you mean on, on YouTube, the chappy who used to make them over in the U.S.? I, I guess so. Yeah, I think I have seen it on YouTube before. Yeah, he, just, he sits yeah. and spins around and flies the control line. Yeah, that, that sort of gave me the idea. Uh, when I had when I had my previous hip done about five years ago, I built a flying chair because I actually wrote to that guy about eight years ago or emailed him and I didn't get a reply. And I tried again recently and he's obviously out of production now or whatever, but yes, I have seen it and that's what inspired me. Okay. To, uh, 
to build the flying chair, but this Mark II that I've got is actually better than my Mark I. <laughs> my Mark II, I gave my Mark I away to a guy down the Waikato who uh, wanted to get back into flying. And um, this other one that Gerald, Gerald's, um, oh, sorry about this. Um, some of you guys might know this guy. This is Bill Bell phoning me. He used to fly speed and he's been to America several times. Um, I'll just I'll come and phone him back later. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> the second chair is much better. Um, I'll bring up a photograph later of it too. You okay, might have seen. sounds good. That's that's good. That's good. Yeah. And um, see here, who was next? Um, so John, John Miller. So uh, anything else uh, since time that you and I talked and time that everyone else talked to you uh, last uh, Friday? Well, I I uh, haven't done anything on the plane. I've been busy with some other stuff. But I did look at the video, at the pictures you sent of that uh, of your putting the new bell crank and everything into well, not I don't think you put a hole in the bell crank, but the system you're using. And it reminds me of what the combat guy guys use button set up, but yeah, it's yes. the wing, you know. The only right. thing the only thing that I saw that made me wonder and it might not be any problem at all, is that the the flange on the on the outermost uh, piece that's that's forming the groove for the cable right seemed a little little narrow. I would have widened it out a little bit or put a put a bigger uh, washer there just just to make sure it can't because see unlike with the combat guys they take theirs on and off every time they change right plane plane. yours is inside the wing you won't be able to get to it to take it on and off and if it gets where it's going to slip off you're dead meat that's a good point i appreciate that that's why i uh wanted your your input yeah it's a it's a good idea that's uh something i definitely will consider yeah yeah it looks good though i think it should work yeah i wish i could uh i just i want to get these photos off my phone onto my pc and then i can share um so that's just the only thing why i don't i'm not sure at this moment i've been trying to to do it a little bit while we're talking but i, I hopefully i might have it set up i'll just keep trying between the conversations and stuff so let me see here Stuart. Stuart, what you been up to Stuart? Yeah, I went flying today. It was a nice right. day. What? Sunny and warm. All right, cool. Beautiful day. Yeah, it was good. That's why you said big mistake when you said, that's why I said, what? I thought you said, I'm flying today. That was a big mistake. I'm one of these little guys, too. <laughs> oh, what happened? What prompted that to you? <laughs> I, uh, You know the rubber ends you use to put on your fingers to start? Yeah. The engines well i did it and it cut right through the bloody thing <laughs> really what kind of what kind of hose did you use well it was one jabai they used for a lot of the guys used for um uh the combat guys use them to start their their engines they're not it's not a hose it's 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 they're made for that right to the black ones you know what i'm talking about the rubber that goes over the end tip so your finger no, yeah. I, I, I mean, I use a, um, I use a, uh, uh, I think oh. it's, a, it's a hose off of a, um, heater, uh, hose. A heater hose, or maybe even like a hose off a dishwasher. Oh, okay. Or a washing yeah. machine. Well, but these are big, I have big fingers, so it has to be a, a large ID for me to, yeah, I have big they, fingers. They, they make those ones in the ones that I have in two different sizes, but it, it kind of cut through in the, oh, that, that's no good. It bit me a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. <laughs> was it the uh, was it the trailing? What's that? Was it the trailing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> what kind of prop was it? Oh, it was just a, um, uh, a master air screw. Oh, well, lucky. was it the tra trailing trailing edge? One thing I didn't do is, is I didn't I, I I I put two props on two planes. And I think I sanded the one, but I might have forgot to sand the other one, so it was pretty sharp. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So do it. You know, I always learn the hard way. So <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Was it the was it the trailing edge or the leading edge of the prop? Well, I think it was the leading edge. 
Okay. Yeah, say. when I when I try and start the props, uh, when I start them, I don't put my fingers down the trailing edge. Like if that's the prop, I put my fingers on them like like I use two fingers. Yeah. And I sort of stroke stroke the the face of the prop. I sort of oh. pull the face of the prop rather face than put my fingers in. behind because I found out with, you know, uh, the hard way that uh, especially those a AP, well, what do you call them? The big gray, gray APC. props are very sharp. But, okay. Yeah, they can be real sharp. They can be real sharp. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've done that too. Uh, unconsciously, I've grabbed the face of the prop and been able to grab it to uh, flip it, you know, without even yeah. being on the uh, trailing or leading edge. Let me yeah. welcome uh, Jim Hoffman. Hey, Jim, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. I, uh, I've All got right. to where, where I backflip to compression. You know. Yeah, that's a safe. That's a safer way to do it. Just backflip it that way. You don't flip it too. You just right flip it back towards compression. Right. Absolutely. Backflip it. Yep. So, how you doing, Jim? What you been up to? Let's see. Uh, I went flying today. I flew a stunt kite. My uh, cousin, he's a big, big kite guy. He's been sending me stunt kites. All right. So, what was this, your this, last time? This was the second outing. <laughs> the first outing without a crash. Oh, so very was, good. You're getting better. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's fun. It's fun. Uh. Just like anything else, there's a lot of technique. So I watched some YouTube videos and learned a little bit and I uh, was pretty successful. I'll tell you, the, it was pretty breezy. I'm sure it was 20 knots. And I got a gust that almost pulled me over. <laughs> wow. Wow. It was, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. That is cool. I mean, because we went flying in the morning and it was nice and then the wind comes up. Bring out your stunt kites and you can continue flying, you know? Yeah, yeah. They, they actually would work on the same day, maybe. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple of comments in the chat box. Uh, Gary Sinclair, he gave us a like. Thank you very much, Gary. And Gary is a monitor as well as a member of our YouTube channel. Appreciate that, Gary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Tom Rammel gave us a like. And Terry Mitchell, he says, uh, John Miller, are you the John... I competed with at the Northwestern Regionals years ago in stunt. I'm an old Seattle Sky Raider. Probably was, yeah. Was, uh, probably was this plane right here. Right here. This one. 1995 at the Pasco or Twin City Nats. Very cool. That's great. That is great. So, Terry Mitchell. And John, you guys met before. Who uh, do you remember? What your recollection is of who won? <laughs> it, was, it wasn't me. Wasn't you? Okay. <laughs> no, well, see, I, I was. I'll give you. A, I I didn't know a lot about the rules, and so what happened? We we're flying in the in an area where they tied down the full size aircraft, and and most of the time, it, they had it laid out so you wouldn't hit the tie downs. But when the wind was blowing pretty bad, so you moved around a lot in the circle, you know, trying to do the do the tricks. And I, I was flying to to make the cut, the top fifteen. And uh, what was that gal's name? She she and I were pretty pretty close. Uh, well, when I, I made my, made my flight, and I, I felt like I had a good one, and I was making a landing, doing a nice descent, and I came down. And, Landed, it's got trike gear, so that was easy. Landed real nice and smooth, rolled around, and I all of a sudden, bam, and the airplane's about eight feet up in the air with no airspeed. Oh. It, hit, it hit one of those tie downs and came down on the nose gear, just bent the nose gear, didn't hurt the airplane. Oh, good. And I rolled out and I got a 10 for the landing. <laughs> and had I known what the rules were, that, well, that, that 10, the gal beat me by half a point to, to make the cutoff for the top 15. Had I known what the rules were, I would have I would have protested on that because the rules say on landing, 
if the, if you hit, strike something or your plane's upset by something that shouldn't be there or something right. on the field, that uh, you you ju- you judge the landing up to the point where it, it hit because I was just rolling out at that right. Time. And so I probably I might have made the cutoff. Yes, I know. But I tell you, not knowing. You gotta know the rules. You gotta know the rules, yeah, because uh, that's that I could that would have been a different outcome if you would have known the rules and would have uh, stated your case, you know. Absolutely. Well, it was I had a heck of a good time and learned a lot about flying in the wind with that one. That uh, fifty knot uh, uh, sock air sock was just straight out like that, you know. And, wow. Uh, now, was Paul Walker the CD back then or someone else? No, it was, um, starts with us. He lives Dave, up north of Dave Seattle. Gardner, doesn't he? Who? Dave Gardner. Dave Gardner. You're right. Dave Gardner. Nice guy. Fantastic. Well, that answers that question, Terry. And then below Terry was McBride 001. That's Ruben. He provided us with a like. Thank you very much, Ruben. Appreciate your support. And Mark Lumen, he's uh, one of our YouTube uh, members. I can tell again by the moniker there next to his name. And we appreciate that support, Mark. And he says, got you like watching tonight, headed headed for back surgery at the end of the month, but going to try and suffer through El Dorado contest this weekend. Well, I hope all goes well with your back surgery. Uh, yeah, take take care of yourself, man. Mm-hmm. And we're all caught up on the chat box. Let me welcome Bob Gore. Hey, Bob, how are you doing? Hi, you're, you're, you're muted, my. Uh, you're muted, Bob. Down below your lower left corner. There you go. There. I'm doing fine. How are you? Doing good. Doing all good. Right. Doing good. I got something I wanted to share with Stuart. If I can get it to work. <laughs> All right. I, I wanted to share a couple of photos that I have of a fuel tank. And uh, the last time I tried this, I don't know how I got it working. So I didn't learn anything. Oh, <laughs> It just worked. <laughs> so you got to bring up what you want to share first. That's the first thing you do. Then after you have it up, then go down to the bottom of this uh, screen there. In the middle is a green, green, green. Um, green image there, green shape, and, and hit the share screen button. And then you select again what you already have up that you wanted to share. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to fumble around with this for a while. So, okay. Are you, on a, are you on an Apple or is it a regular PC? Regular PC. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, <laughs> and then you always can fall back on Janet. Janet probably can help you out. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't want to listen to it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Naomi. <laughs> hey, Naomi, how are you doing? Can't hear it. Len's got it. Hi, I'm Naomi, muted. how are you doing? You got to un- unmute it, Naomi. You got to unmute it now. Down in the lower left corner there. If you're on a regular PC, there we go. So you can see that unlike Len, who thinks he's going to stay up all night and be on Sun Hanger and falls asleep in his chair, I'm <laughs> in my pajamas. Oh, that's right. Ready to go to bed and <laughs> saying, I'm tired. <laughs> I can't stay up all night and go on Sun Hanger. I, I know. Go to, I know. I got to go to sleep. Well, it's like, I don't know what time it is where you are, but it's like past 1030 here and like, that's late for me. So, yeah, yeah. Well, we have a, it's probably not a good time for everybody, but yeah. No, I know there's no good time for everybody because everybody's in different time zones and different parts of the country and we're in a totally different country. So, you know, well, yeah. And I have a wife and kids and our dinner routine and everything else. And it's just, kind oh, of yeah, yeah. Well, the school yeah. and all that stuff. So, so what time is it wh- where you are right now? It's seven 34 here. Yeah. So that's early. Like that. You probably just finished dinner. Not even that long yeah, ago. Before I come on the show, I have dinner. Yeah. Yet. 
Yeah. And I can understand, like, if you've got younger kids, like my kids are adults now. So like they're, they have their own schedules, you know, they don't. But when your kids are young, it's like you got to tuck them in and they put them to bed and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, exactly. So have you been doing any flying or you've been doing any building? I have not because I've I'm just getting over still just getting over a really, really, really horribly bad cold. And so I just haven't had the energy to really do anything. I mean, mm. I I had to take a bunch of time off work because I was too sick to even go to work. Wow. Okay. So I've I've just finally made it back to work, but then that also means that the days when I'm working, I have no energy to do anything else. Yeah. It, like <laughs> it's just like you know. And today was actually a good day. We got outside and we did some gardening. After so Len went after Len went flying, but I didn't because I had an appointment this morning. So that's about all I can deal with in one that's, day. That's fine. I have a question for you, Naomi. If, yeah. I mean, when you can do this full stunt pattern and crash is not an issue and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Is that, is your, does that ever happen? It because- does. It does. What is your what is your dream airplane? What is the plane that you like? Ooh, I gotta have one of those. All right, such a well. I I have a kit for actually. I have a couple different ones right now, which I have not built yet. But I have a time machine. Okay, nice. Which is it's for a forty. It's a profile for a forty size motor, which is about the maximum I feel comfortable. Even going to a 46, it's just, it pulls a little bit too hard for my arm and my arm gets too tired by the end of the flight. So I have that. And I also have um, an almost ready to cover, not almost ready to fly and almost ready to cover vector 40. Oh, nice. Nice. So those are my two dream models right now and very good choices excellent yeah and and until i get those go built um i'm gonna keep flying my shark 402 which is an absolutely amazing um stunt model for Mm -hmm. for me it's just it it's It's your go-to it is i was so 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 happy i had no idea how happy i was going to be with that plane <laughs> until i started flying it oh it, that is cool yeah, yeah and i'm still i'm hoping to get my tutor finished so that i can also try that out cuz it's also a 25 size mm-hmm. um the one i'm building is a 25 oh, size oh it's a tutor so, one okay tutor one yeah so um, that seems to be my, I've sort of taken a step back from the bigger, I was flying my Twister, which has a, a 40 on it. And that also is a really, really good um, plane for me. It flies excellent. Like it's a pantorized, pantorized Twister. It's a nice plane also. Very, very well. But I had a bit of a... Hmm incident uh crash with that one when i was trying to do some consecutive loops and i busted it pretty good or bad (laughs) depending on how you look at it (laughs) and and len was able to fix it but it did somewhat make me want to take a step back and fly something a little smaller just to get a little and I don't know, it, it kind of broke my heart a little bit when I broke that airplane because it was so pretty and it just flew so well. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I just, uh, I, I will get back to flying a Twister again. It's just, uh, uh, I didn't want to, I wanted to try something different. So that's what we came up with the Shark 402. Len was really keen on it. I didn't know how 
like I said, I had no idea how much I was going to like it until I got out there. And that's what I flew last year at Brodax and also at the Nats. And uh, I flew it in, in beginner at the Nats and it was the most windy, rainy, horrible freaking flying conditions. But I flew and my first flight, I did fine. I did, I, well, I did the basic flight. I didn't do the full beginner pattern. I did the basic flight pattern, including an, an inside loop, and I did fine. But then the, on my second flight, missed I missed the wind. And I started my inside loop too soon. And the wind literally just took it away from me. Uh. It just like... I could not get it back. It was, it, I mean, as soon as I went up and I felt the wind take it, I went, oh crap, why did I do that? I, I just, but I was nervous because again, you know, you're flying in front of judges and I knew it was really windy and I, I sure, I sure as heck knew where downwind was because there was no mistaking it. I mean, the wind was like <laughs> definitely right there. But I was, because I was nervous, I wow. just, I started too soon. And I didn't realize I actually would have been better to go a little further downwind rather than trying to start too soon. It would have been a much better uh but, you know, yes, like, hindsight is a great teacher, right? Yeah, yeah. But hindsight is twenty twenty. I mean, I knew what I did wrong as soon as I did it, but it was too late. It okay. it was just too late. And Len was in the middle of the circle with me because I get really nervous when I'm in a a contest. And so, even though I knew what I was supposed to do, I don't like to try to rely on my memory for what to do next. So it's like, I rely on him to sort of remind me and say, okay, you're gonna do your next, your next maneuver is the wing over. Your next maneuver is the roller coaster. Your next maneuver is your inside loop. And that way I don't have to stop and try to think about it because I'm just trying to take each thing one by one so that I can totally focus on whatever it is I'm doing without having to try to think about, well, what, what am I supposed to do next? That's right? a good idea. Having Lynn call up, call out the maneuvers for you. Yeah. And, and that will help someone else in our audience. And also like he, he helps me as far as making sure I understand. Okay. Yeah. You, you're going to want to, this is, you know, you're going to want to start your maneuvers right there. You're going to want to start your wing over at, this spot and your all your other maneuvers you're going to start opposite right tell them what you've started doing with your cones putting one yeah we one started one. using cones so like we have these little orange cones right so we we put one upwind and one downwind so that way it's a visual marker okay. right. how tall are these cones how tall are they it it doesn't really matter because some of them are bigger than others. It's just okay. whatever we happen to be able to pick up at the dollar store or whatever, you know, like we didn't want to spend a fortune on them, but um, it definitely helps. And like, I find now when I'm, when I'm flying, like I don't have to, like when I first started trying to do all these different maneuvers, I would like, I would not take my eyes off my model because I was like paranoid that if I didn't watch it every single second that it would do something weird you know that I wasn't right, expecting right. it to do and now I can I realize like I don't have to do that because I can rely on okay if I keep my arms straight and I keep my wrist straight and I and I can feel what it's doing at the end of the lines I know if I'm staying more or less right where it's supposed to be. So I, and also I try to stay ahead of my plane all the time. That's something that Len really emphasized with me when I was learning how to fly. 
And it really, really helps when you're trying to learn maneuvers because if you're staying ahead of your plane and you're watching it sort of out of your peripheral vision, and then it, you sort of get yourself into position to do your first maneuver, say it's your, your wing over for a beginner, it's wing over, it's not a reverse wing over, but it's same idea. You like sort of plant yourself and you're already in the right position with your body to do that maneuver right. before the plane even gets there. So I'm you're sad. prepared, you're prepared right. like mentally and physically to, to, for that plane to come right into the wind and then you take it up and you follow it over and all this. And it, I just, I found like, not just like staring right at it actually made it harder and it makes you more dizzy too, mm -hmm. because it, like if you if you don't shift your field of vision you get like the i i got so dizzy when i first started flying and then when i first started trying to fly inverted it was the same thing because i um i had finally gotten over getting dizzy flying one way but then when i tried to fly inverted it's like wait a minute this is so weird i'm going the other direction right. now and I, so I started getting dizzy again. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it goes all over again. I totally get it. And, and you know, yeah. Lynn and I have something in common. We both have flown 80 ounce planes. Right. And so you definitely need to get ahead of the plane and get yourself planning oh, before yeah. you start to maneuver, or else the plane will take you off your feet. Yeah. So and, and, that. and that's the, again, why I decided to go with a lighter, smaller, model because my arms are not that strong i admit it like um if if i don't exercise or go to the gym or whatever lift weights do something my arms are not that strong you mean there's so no ship in your future at, so it's like if i'm flying a big model that pulls hard it's like by the end of a seven or eight minute flight well my arm's so exhausted i can hardly land properly because my arm's just going oh my god when are you gonna you know when are you gonna yeah. stop doing this and i'm like trying to finesse the landing and get it to come in all nice and smooth well if my arm's tired there's no way my landing's gonna suck right yeah. because i got nothing left it by that by that point I totally understand that i'm yeah. just going like oh god you know and forget about going up for another flight until i get a chance to rest my arm a bit heavy planes will do that plus heavy planes yeah. will uh, help your handshake because i i uh was that a oh point? yeah I was at a party and I, uh, uh, someone I, I saw on a, every year, we, at the, July 4th, we have a party at my friend's house. And I gave this guy a handshake and greeting. I hadn't seen him in a year and shook his hand. And later on, that same individual went and talked to my mutual friend, who was the host. And he said, that guy, Charles, has a strong handshake. And my friend, Mike Mulligan, he goes, yeah, that's because he flies heavy airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the, I would say, though, like I have flown some of Len's bigger, bigger airplanes, like big, his, like I flew his shark attack, which is what? 51. 51 inch wingspan? No, 51. No, 51 motors. Sorry, what's the wingspan? It's 60 huge. Inch, 60, inch. 60 inch wingspan. And I, I mean, he had taken off and he had uh, flown the pattern with it but he or he was flying the pattern with it but he kind of handed it off to me and I was able to fly it like and and wow. land it and I was actually amazed because it's so well trimmed and it's just such a good flying airplane that I didn't find it hard to maneuver at all it was dead smooth like Flying that plane level was a like dream. It, it's like it, you could just, it would just settle into this nice track and it would just stay there. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah, you know? Hey, no, Naomi, maybe you can answer this question because uh, John Skukalek, he asked, can, and he's also a member of our YouTube channel. He says, can someone describe the basic flight pattern? You mentioned the basic flight. I'm not familiar with that name. 
Yeah, it's I I don't have it in front of me, but it's basic. The basic flight is like this: the first thing you learn when when you when you're trying to learn how to fly precision aerobatics. It's like the step before the beginner pattern. The beginner pattern is actually pretty hard. Yes, for I, know, somebody, I hate that name, beginner, because that's yeah, not. A it's not pattern. actually a beginner yeah. pattern at all. Because no. when you're a beginner, there's like things in there that I still have not been able to do yet. Like I have never done um, horizontal, eight, like not horizontal stunt aids. I've done lazy aids, but I have not done proper hor like horizontal stunt aids yet. Yeah. Okay. And um, and vertical eights? No, I've never. Or or overhead eights? No, no, I've Does never done know, any uh, of that stuff. Anyone here know what the basic pattern is? It's John. Take uh, off, take off, level flight, um, wing over. Uh, I'm trying to remember roller this coaster. roller coaster. I don't. I don't know if I'm doing it, this in the right order. There's. Uh, there's a high flight in it as high well, flight, high, high level, flight, high level, level flight. flight. So you have to take it up um, 45, degrees. 45 degrees and keep it up there for so many laps. Let's see if I can find it. Um, and there's one inside loop. That's okay. the, that's, but to me, even just doing a wing over is hard enough. Now, now in basic flight, they don't expect you to do a 90 degree wing over. Okay. They only expect you to do maybe like a 70 degree wing over. Okay. I've never heard of that. That's that's interesting. Yeah. Now in beginner, they do expect you to do a 90 degree wing right. over, but right. not a reverse, just a regular right. Right. wing right. over. But they do expect right. it to be 90 degrees, right. which was very hard for me and is still very hard for me. Jonathan Karatis has a comment or question. Yeah, Naomi. Yeah. Have, um, I'm glad to see a woman flying. We don't have many here flying. And <laughs> there, aren't a, there aren't any up here either. I'm yet. Oh, gosh. Well, you might be starting a movement. You know, yeah, I hope know. you do start a movement, Naomi. I've been yeah. trying. I've been trying to get other women to, to get, you know, um, yeah, give it a go and. You know, I, I'm always happy to see other women try it any, of any age, you know. Yes. So. That's good. Well, we've got a couple here that fly, and it's it's great to see. So uh, I salute you. And the other thing yeah. I was going to oh, say, when you, when, you fly the, when you fly the heavier models of lens, I bet you find it much easier to get the high stuff in the pantry. Yeah. <laughs> Another, yeah, yeah, you'll stretch, I'll stretch you out. Exactly. <laughs> Let me uh, uh, welcome some other well, people come in. I have yeah. actually, um, um, Phil, I think Phil, you came in. Thank you, Philip Bailey. So, ba Philip, what is happening with you? And thank you, Naomi. Okay. Thanks. Oh, this, okay, oh, there. Go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. Go ahead, Naomi. Uh, Len found the basic flight pattern. Oh, thank you. So Go for it. It's, um, oh, yeah. I'll write it down. This was from, from the Nats. So it's like first maneuver is take off and level flight. So you're supposed to do four laps level after your first full lap. Uh, two, I forgot about this one, climb and dive. Okay. Oh, yes. So you're supposed to do two consecutive climb and dives. So that's um, within one lap or no, two consecutive climb and dives. So you do one climb and dive and then you go around and you do another climb and dive. That's considered one maneuver. Then how, many, how many laps between maneuvers? Uh, two, 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 two laps between every maneuver, same as regular yeah. stunt pattern. Uh, the third maneuver is two consecutive wing overs. So it's not just one, it's two. But again, they, it's actually only 60 degrees that they okay. expect you to do, not, not 70. 
so uh, it's a much shallower wing over than right. what he, right. he would usually do. Fourth maneuver is high and level for full four full laps. So you have to take it up to 45 degrees and hold it up there for four full laps and then bring it back down to level flight. The fifth maneuver is your inside loop, just one inside loop. And then your last maneuver is your roller coaster. So you're supposed to do four tops at 30 degrees um, within two, two laps. No, within one lap, sorry. So it's every quarter of a lap, you're supposed to do a climb and a dive, climb okay. and a dive. And you're supposed to do that twice, two laps of that. So you're at eight all together, four and then four more. To 30 degrees. 30 degrees, yes. Okay. But it's supposed to be a fairly dramatic. This is the what I was getting wrong. When I was doing my roller coaster, I was thinking of like just gradual, like smooth, smooth sort of like a smooth um, wave or something. Like, but what they're looking for is actually a fairly dramatic, like climb and dive. Okay. Right. But just down to level flight, not like not close to the ground. That uh, is 40 upwind. So 30 degrees is not super high, but to do that like in a controlled way and get it in oh, yeah. like oh, within a quarter of a lap is actually pretty oh, yeah. a lot harder than you think. Like a lot goes. Man. Yeah, and you have to do two, two in a row. So, again, if you're not, if eight you're not, times and eight dives in two laps. It's pretty easy to get dizzy when you start trying to. Yeah, if you're you trying feel... to focus too much on It'd staring at the model <laughs> and and not shifting your vision back and forth, and then of course you're fine. You're optional maneuver you have an optional maneuver where you can repeat only uh one maneuver and it has to be either the high end level the inside loop or the roller coaster those are the and you have it's an optional you don't have to do it but if you want to do it for a chance just to get an extra some more points, some more points then you, you have to tell the judges, you have to write it on your sheet, which maneuver you're going to do okay. as your optional maneuver. That's very, so very you, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's uh, great so, information. What, what, what about I, the I like that? I like the idea of a do-over. You could pick one maneuver and yeah. get a do-over. <laughs> yeah. 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 The only thing is you have to decide before you... You start you like you can't just decide when you're out okay, there you yeah. have to actually tell them what you're gonna do oh, so it's you, usually pretty obvious which, yeah. which one you want to do over. I, I, I could i could tell them in advance yeah yeah <laughs> and and there are pattern points as well like just like in beginner or any kind of stunt like if you do if you at least attempt and and uh, each maneuver of this basic flight pattern, you get your pattern points. So it's that's 20... at the nationals. The uh, basic flight is at the national. Yeah, yeah. This was given to me at the at the U.S. Nats by the contest direct director because I mentioned when I was going to do my first flight with a beginner, he heard me saying that I. I, I, that I would, I was going to admit some of the maneuvers because I wasn't able to even attempt them yet. And he's like, well, why don't you do the basic flight pattern then? And I'm like, okay, I didn't even know I could do that. Yeah, but it, sure, I've never, you know, never heard that concept. Give it to me. I'll try it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, sounds good. 
Jonathan, go ahead, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, just the last couple of questions, Naomi. That, um, that's actually quite good training because that already gives you about eight points at least to uh, try and remember an order. But I was going to say, yeah. uh, for, do you um, get points for landing? Uh, like, do they expect you to do a, you know, a pretty much uh, um, F2B type landing? Yeah, actually, that is, sorry, that is the final thing is to do your level flight to landing where the yeah. motor stops and you have smooth descent to touchdown. Yes. So, yeah, you are scored on your um, – each maneuver, your score is between 10 and 40. So your minimum amount of points that you're supposed to get if you even attempt the maneuver is 10. Yeah. And then okay. it, go, it goes up to 40, maximum being if you really, really aced it and did it like really excellent right so uh and they have the picture of the maneuvers on the score yeah. sheet as well so it gives you the diagram of what they're supposed to actually look like it's hard to see but oh, no, it shows that pretty clear i see it nice yeah and that's end. good so I it's if a, never heard of that i wonder if you or lynn might be able to send us a copy of that if i send you a personal message Sure, I could. Yeah, yeah send send an email address, and I can uh, I can yeah. Uh, send you a. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll I... send it. I'll give you a personal message. We've been talking about something like that here, you know, just to get a bit of a graduation it's because. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, because... You have... Yeah, it's good. So one one more question: uh, between the basic flight and the beginners, they compete on the same circle. So is it yes, possible? yes. Is it, so it possible was, for someone doing the basic flight beat someone doing the full beginner flight, or that's not going to happen? No, I I don't think so because um, beginner is a a different pattern. Like uh, it's, I think it has um, more different okay. maneuvers. Oh, yeah, so definitely. you you would be able to get a higher score if okay. you were able to do Lane's everything. Going to get it. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. going to get it. See, I was using, I've been using stuff like this as a learning tool right. ever since I started trying to learn how to fly precision right. aerobatics because this is all like totally new to me. So yeah. there's the beginner pattern. Yeah, this is the beginner pattern here. Yeah. And again, like they have the diagrams that where it shows you what each maneuver is supposed to look like. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Yeah, so there's one more maneuver. So you have takeoff and level flight, wing over, three inside loops, three outside loops. Yeah two inside square loops, two horizontal eights, two overhead eights, landing and pattern points. And your pattern points are either zero or 25. In, in basic flight, your pattern points are 20. In beginner, it's 25. Okay. So you see like there, if, if you are actually able to do beginner, Right. Your score would be, be more higher. because okay. you have not only one extra maneuver to be scored on, five but points. your pattern points, you would get five more right. points. So, it, uh, no, you wouldn't. I would, out of all the people who flew beginner at the Nats, I was the only one who did basic flight, but they, it was done at the same time in, in the same circle as the people who were flying the beginner pattern. Thank you so much, Naomi. I appreciate that. I had and no I have and I have to say that the first time I went to the Nats, which was what 20, 2012. 2012, and Alan Brickhouse was the contest oh, wow. director. Wow, yeah. And I went with Len, and I'd been so keen on the idea that I was gonna try to fly beginner, and I was all hyped up about it, and I was like so determined I was gonna try to learn how to do at least some of the maneuvers and I got there and it, because like, when is it like it's in July, right? Well, July is still pretty much the 
Like it's not the very beginning of our flying season, but it's still fairly early right. in the flying season. And I got there and I still couldn't do anything. I could sort of do what sort of looked like a wing over, oh. <laughs> but I couldn't do an inside loop. I couldn't do it. I hadn't even attempted an outside. I couldn't, I couldn't even think about attempting squares or, or eights or any of the other maneuvers. So I felt like an absolute idiot mm -hmm. signing up for a beginner. I was like, I honestly, like I went to the table to sign up and I was just like, I don't know if I should even do this. I can't do anything. I, I feel like an idiot. I feel like I it's an uh... Alan Brickhouse. I will never forget this. He looked at me and he said, we don't care. We want to see you fly. Absolutely. You're Absolutely. not going to be the only one out there who doesn't know how to do the beginner pattern. That's what beginner is all about. That's right. Beginner, Joe Mata, you listening, Joe Mata? Beginner is about you just going out there and flying and doing whatever. He says, I don't care if you go out there and fly flat and level for your whole flight. I want to see you fly. Oh, that's great. I felt so good. I was like, oh, yes. my God, Ellen, I could kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That is great. It's, it's, I felt like such an idiot. I felt like people were going to just be like, what the heck is she doing out there? She doesn't know how to fly. <laughs> and there's, hopefully there's some beginners out there that are encouraged by what you're saying, because that's just go out there and just fly. Just yeah. have yep. fun. We want to see everyone fly. You know, it's like you don't have to be, you know, a whoever you can fill in the blank. You know, a Paul yeah. Walker or yeah. Grab the handle. And then and then after the beginner event was over, it's like they had all these prizes that were donated because Alan used to gather up prizes from everybody yeah. he could, and and they had all these prizes lined up on the grass and they called every everybody that flew in that event and they went in order of like the you know the first place to whatever 11th place or whatever it was i think it was 11 people that flew that year and everybody got to go through and pick four or five like we each got like at least five or six prizes. Wow. And I was like amazed. I'm like, what? I get a prize and I didn't even like I, I was like second last <laughs> out of everybody. And the only reason I wasn't last is because one poor guy crashed on his flight and he didn't have another plane to fly. So he wasn't able to get a like a proper um, score, yes. right? I yeah, know. I uh, even on our show when uh, Mike Lonky went there, Sam Lonky cleaned up. He walked through the line several times and gathered. And I, I felt like and a, handles and it, lines. Yeah, I got. I walked away with like a a cup a couple of models and some like you say a couple of motors and lines, lines and, and props and all kinds of stuff. Yes. I was like as happy as I like Christmas as huh? could be. Christmas I was just like, this is amazing. Yeah, I know. We really treat our beginners well. I mean, it's like, you know, if you're thinking about coming to the Nationals, especially this being our 50th, and uh, go because they, they do, they really do try to encourage, you know, beginners. We, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It really is. Oh, let me, yeah. uh, let me get back to Philip Bailey. Sorry about that. That's okay. But that's all right. Anyway, thank you so much. I, I, I'm going to say good night now, but Alrighty. it was nice seeing you, everybody. Nice seeing you. Know, and don't be a stranger. Keep coming in. Okay. Yeah. I know that uh, you appeal and you encourage Wait, other beginners. I know my friend Joe Mata and Carl Reed, I'm sure they're encouraged by what you said. So, and now like obviously John Kukulek is also was in intrigued. He wanted to know about the basic flight. So John Skukalek was probably, uh, he's probably in a similar boat. Right. So all, it's all good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good Is night, really Naomi. Yeah, good night. Good night. Hey, Phil, what's happening, my man? Oh, about the same old, same old.
uh, getting through getting through the week. Okay. We got to, we went out flying Saturday and uh, flying. I flew my Ringmaster. Uh, they called. We, it was supposed to be too windy, and we didn't think we was going to fly. Everybody was just going to meet for lunch, and we woke up Saturday morning, and uh, I didn't hear the wind blowing and couldn't figure out what was going on. And about that time, Tom called and said, "Hey, it's it's cleared up. We're going to all try to." meet at the field at, at nine o'clock. So I said, all right, I'll see you there. So I got the ringmaster ready because I didn't have time to charge batteries. I would have had, because Tom, Tom called me at 7.30 and said, we're going. But I rolled over trying to figure out, well, I just discharged all the batteries last night after hearing it was going to be windy. So what the heck am I going to fly? And I rolled over and went back to sleep for an hour. So anyway, uh, went out there and got there about 9.30 and, uh, Flew, I don't know how many times, but we flew. I flew my little Ringmaster, and it's it's flying very well. So Tommy and Buddy Barbie and Steve and Dave Dave Henson and I forgot who else was there. Well, we flew and just had a great time. Oh, good! It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Hey, Phil. Yes, sir. Did you ever get that big fat wing into that fuselage? I got the big fat wing ready to go in the fuselage. I just got to get the fuselage finished. Oh, okay. Cool. The wing's finished. The tail's finished. Uh, I just need to put it in. just need to get the fuselage finished and get it in there. It wouldn't have been such a problem, except I already built the fuselage and realized that round My peg mistake. ain't going in that square hole. <laughs> oh, no. My, My mistake. I, I, I did the, the, oh, the, the heck wing and didn't change the size of the hole on the fuselage i'm sorry that's all right i'll use it when i build i'm going to build a a, a, a hershey bar wing twin i'll just use that fuselage then oh, okay. i'll just cut the front of it off and, and, and reshape it you know like the new one and uh i want to do that very good what, what engine are you planning on using in the uh mark four uh, 28 26 28 yeah 28 26 that yep. should do it. Yep, I hope so. I hope so. I'm gonna do that in a in a KR timer and a cheap ESC. I'm having better luck with the KR timers and cheap ESCs than I'm having with the expensive timers and expensive ESCs. Yeah, the timers yeah. are working well, but my ESCs are giving me a fit. Hmm. So okay. So did you get a chance to talk to Esprit to see if they will uh, accept it? No, I didn't. I haven't had a chance. My uncle passed away Thursday night. I've been right. working on that, trying to get everybody in here. Still oh. trying to get enough people to have a, a, my cousins. Everybody, all of us are getting old, and, and everybody's laid up. Nobody can lift. So, I've got a. I've got to, today. We finally figured out who our six pallbearers are going to be. So, uh, my cousin Jimmy and I'll be two, and then the other four are just two of them. Well, yeah, we've got we got six now, so we'll be all right. Last time with my aunt, we ended up with eight, and I ended up at wow. the end of the line, so I had a hard time stepping. You know, I'm long legged, and when you got in front of you, he's long legged too. Wow, I had to step on my right leg when he was going there. Oh, yeah, I'm on the earphones. Vicky, mm -hmm. Charles says, Hey, hey, she hey. said, Hello, hey, yeah, she's she's back here watching TV and doing her feet. All right. Oh, Lord. Well, let me anyway. ask uh, Caffeine. Um, what's going on with him, Caffeine? What's happening? Hi, guys. Uh, how are you guys doing? Doing well, well. Good, good. Well, actually, I didn't do any flying or building during the last weekend. So there's no much update for, for, for from me. But I only uh, I only made a, a new... A new fuel tank bracket for my uh, uh, Japanese ARF that I'm building right now. Hopefully, uh, I can finish it uh, in a couple of weeks from now. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a replacement for for my Banshee that 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 the nose is uh, torn apart. Yeah, I I I will I will fix that Banshee later. But yeah, you know. Uh, I I currently enjoy enjoying. Um, I really enjoy flying flying my Factor uh, last time. So I will I will give some more time flying flying the Factor and then 
the other uh, planes that I have, the Cardinal and the Japanese R that I'm building. So uh, that's pretty much uh, about it from, from me now. All right, that's cool. Hey, I have a question in the chat box. This is from Terry Mitchell. He says, question for everyone, what's better, a Uniflow tank or a Hopper tank? So what you're doing. What you're doing, yeah. There are some Hopper tanks that are Uniflow, uh, Terry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I personally like Uniflow tanks, but that's because of the way I set them up and they work good and I, yeah, I've never, I, I never have a failure with them. But some people have troubles with them. And so they go with uh, hopper uh, for sport and combat, and, or some scale sometimes. Uh, but for precision aerobatics, it, it, I think you need to go either with a with a uniflow wedge tank or a standard vent wedge tank. Anybody else want to? Anybody else want to throw their hat in the ring? I don't know anybody that flies a hopper tank in stunt that's had that's had good luck with it. A lot of people have tried, but there's always a problem somewhere. You use a hopper? I've tried it, had difficult times, and uh, for some reason could not ever get it to work to my liking. And I have a I guy. Could either. I have a guy who comes out here. He builds these planes, and guess what he uses? He uses a hopper tank. And they fly excellent. I'm just like, what are you doing? I don't understand. I can't well, get a hopper to work to save my life. You know, the guy that flew the uh, the uh, stunt fire, Tiger 60 on a plane that looked like a Gillows kit. And when I built mine, I put a four-stroke in it, a 56 four-stroke. His was a Tiger 60, and his was a romping, stomping Tiger 60. And it worked for him, but I built the same thing, the same dimension, the same everything, and mine never worked. Yeah, I never so, can get a hopper tank to work to my satisfaction. I switched to that four stroke and a and a cut and gutted it and put a, a uniflow a plastic uniflow in it, and it flew great right up until the fuselage failed in, in air. So, so Terry Mitchell, I think the que the answer to that question is is that the uniflow tank is probably easier, mm -hmm. yeah, more likely to be successful using that. I really can't say anything terrible about the hopper tank just because i couldn't get it to work it might work but i just couldn't get it to work but I I, every, to every, work every time i got the uniflow to work and then the next person we have in the chat box is uh bill boomer he says hi charles i've been watching every show for a year thank you so much he goes canadian from toronto area known lenny for probably about 40 years uh, yes. Going to try to join the video show tonight. Like given, Bill. Hey, Bill. Well, we'll Bill, be looking. We'll be Bill looking. Bill Bomer. Yeah, yeah, Bill Bomer. Yeah, he's a great guy. He says he's going to try to come in tonight. So, uh, Bill, hey, if you just go to the uh, just go to uh, Stunhanger forum and go to at the bench. If you're a member of the forum, you should be able to find at the bench is right below in memory of our friends. And click on the link with today's date, and that's how you get in here. Just get permission for your camera and um, microphone, and then you should be right in here. Yes, John? Getting back, just to, I wanted to interject this, my own personal feelings and findings on Uniflow tanks for stunt. A lot of guys put a clunk on the Uniflow line and the pickup line. I've done that. Or or they connect the two together on the same clunk so that the uniflow line is moving with the pickup line. And I think that's, I know they, some people get them to work, but I don't think that's the best way to set it up because your uniflow is changing its location in the tank as it, as a, as it flops up and down and, and within the uh, fuel. And I think that that can cause some inconsistencies in the run. I like to mount my uniflow solid so and then that way I can also adjust the height to the tank with it and just have the pickup line on a clunk. And so yeah I, I highly recommend it. A lot of people say they don't like uniflows that they don't work right for them and that and that's quite possibly one of the reasons why. Maybe. Yeah I actually was listening to a uh, Roy Trantham 
clinic. I didn't go to Brodex that year, but Roy Trantham had a uh, clinic and he talked about using two clunks in his clunk tank. And, um, and he, he did it with quite success. I actually uh, used it and it worked well. I had a tutor, tutor two, and I had that set up in that and it flew, it flew, flew good to my recollection. I don't remember a fuel problem with that plane. Except for one thing I might've had with it was siphoning. I had to clamp off the, uh, the pickup line uh, when I wasn't using it just to make sure it wouldn't just, you know, siphon out of the, out of the uh, fuel tank. But right. besides that, it flew, it flew, it ran good. Right, and the, and the other thing is, is complicating an issue, the simplest, the simplest yeah. way to accomplish the task and reliably is usually the best way. Yeah, so I have not done it since then. I've been using the clunk setup that you described on the uh, on the uh, forum, and I've told others to do it that way. It's a good good system. It's a great system. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And so let me see. I think we're all caught up on the chat box. And hey, Bob Gore, did I give you a chance to finish what you're going to say? I don't know if I. Oh, that's right. You're trying to uh, share something with us, and I see how Janet came in. I just saw Janet's arm. I didn't see much of her. I wasn't sure if that was her until you it pointed was. out to her. Yeah. So I'm she gonna got hit the way. I'm gonna hit the share button here and see what happens. Okay. All right. All right, it works. It's working. Okay. And and Philip, thank you for the like, Philip. Appreciate that. So what are, what are we looking at? Well, hey. that's the back oh. end of a little fox tank that I probably bought in 1970. But what I was wanting to uh, do was talk to Stuart about uh, uh, something he brought up a few meetings back, couple meetings anyway, where he said that uh, his airplane uh, quit running in a loop, uh, maybe like in a vertical eight, and up toward the top, it gave up and came down and crashed. And I lost a couple airplanes that way. And uh, in that same configuration like the upper loop of a vertical eight and uh, then I got on uh, flying lines and there's a guy on there by the name I think Hugh Oren and he was talking about studying these baffles that you can see in this tank here uh, yeah. and and learning how to do that and and uh, he did a lot of experimenting with it and figured out what he wanted to do <clears throat> and recently I cut this tank open because I wanted to shorten it to make it fit in in a small airplane mm -hmm. and uh, i was surprised to see that this old fox tank had that baffle in there with those holes and all and i wanted to show that to stewart i've been using this system ever since i lost my first two airplanes and uh, you know two engines quitting in the middle of everything and i've not had any failures like that since and what he what he what a person needs to understand is the fuel is coming into these holes, centrifugal force is helping it go through there, but it's there's a reservoir there at the end around your pickup line. And it doesn't run out of fuel near as easily as if there's no baffle. And uh, yeah. I didn't know if maybe he'd be interested in trying something like that. I've been doing it to the, you know, the, the tanks like we buy from Brodak <clears throat> and uh, they don't have this, this enlarged area here for the fuel, but uh, they're, they're more the shape of this plate here that's in there, that baffle. <clears throat> but it's easy enough to do, and uh, I, I just wanted to show it to him. I've had amazing success with it. And, well, I think that preceded the Uniflow tank. Is that right, guys? Well, the that baffle, reminds the baffle me of the, system. The baffle system, you, if you look at the original plans on the Nobler, Aldrich had a baffle system on his tank. So did uh, so did uh, the, the Thunderbird, um, and I think uh, let's see the Southwick. Southwick used a uh, clunk, a rotating uh, clunk in there. Yes. So, yeah. The reason Bill. I know that is because Gary, um, not Gary, but Bill um, Bill Biles taught me how to make a tank and he and Bill Biles and uh, I think uh, Phil Grandison learned from Ed Southwick how to make tanks. Well, that's interesting the way that's done. Um, oh, you know, for, for Stewart's 
the information there too, if you or you're converting a uniflow tank and putting this baffle in there, I'd mount the uniflow tube outside of the baffle so there's not blowing bubbles around your pickup line. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Just just leave, leave it leave it as a as a baffle and don't fool around with the uniflow. Is that what you're saying, Lynn and uh, Howard? Uh, I'd, I'd leave it as a uniflow and don't fool around with the baffle. Oh, I agree. I agree with Howard 100%. I'll tell you my story on baffles. I, I used a baffle tank back in 1981 with a Fox 35 and a nobler type airplane. It worked absolutely beautiful. And I thought, hey, I've found it. This is the cat's butt. This works incredible. So then the next year, I got my first 46 size airplane and I'm all revved up. I make my own tank. I make one of these baffle tanks up, make a bigger one because I need a bigger tank. Stick that in the airplane. I break the engine in on a stand first, stick it in the airplane. I run it. Seems to run okay on the ground. I put it in the air. That damn airplane ran full bore for seven minutes solid, cooked the brand new motor. Oh. Just absolutely roasted it. And I'm not saying it was the baffle that caused it, but... <laughs> One of the top Canadians said to me, don't ever put a baffle tank in anything ever again. He says, use a proper uniflow tank. And so I never went back to a baffle. I've always used a regular uniflow tank ever since, and I've never done it again. I how, better we, how much better we listen after we fry a new motor? Oh, yeah. I, I, I cooked this the, it was, it was a brand new Enya 45, and I cooked that thing so roasted that it had absolutely zero compression by the time I got to the Canadian Nats. Damn. And Freddie Tellier, who was our top Canadian at the time, he said, look, that motor is not going to run at all this week. It's cooked. He says, you take that out of the airplane. We're going to take that tank out of your airplane. And you're going to use my motor, my backup motor, and my backup tank in your airplane for the week. And we did. And I'll tell you, it ran beautifully. So, But we can't argue with Bob Gore's success. He's had nothing. Well, but hey, success. like I say, it worked great for me on my first airplane with a Fox 35. It was absolutely spectacular. But I guess some engines like it and some don't. I think that yeah. may be the deal. Yeah. Our hobby and is so interesting. We have people who are in different camps. You, know, you have some people yeah. that are like, they only like solid lines and some only like braided lines. You know, exactly. we have-, we have well, Exactly, and I'm not saying, like, yeah. I'm it's, not saying that, that Apple that tank is a wrong tank, tank. That particular tank is a profile tank or a profile. Yes. Yeah. And, and therein lies the big difference. Yeah, let's don't stir anything up, Charles. You remember, you, you, I don't know if you've been around long enough to remember the great Tune Piper Muffler Wars, but we don't need to start that mess again. <laughs> no, I was just, I, was just uh, I had shared with Carl Reed how we have in our hobby, we have like the McCoys and the, uh, what's the other one? The uh, Fox McCoy. The McCoy, no, not the, not the people. I mean, I mean, oh. the people. You know, you have yeah. these rivals, the McCoys and the. Oh, Hat Rocks. Actually, Hat to... Rocks and the McCoys. Yeah, the Hat yeah. Rocks. Yeah, and it's like you have these uh, these debates, these camps where they just disagree. You oh, know? exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying that the baffle doesn't work because it did work for me I'm on the one airplane. It was absolutely beautiful. But just keep in mind, it may not work in every situation. Okay. But the Uniflow yeah. has worked in every situation Grace, for yeah. me if it was set up right. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a good, good point. The Uniflow is this a easy consistent it works all the time system i mean that's what i've experienced yeah exactly. a hopper i can't get it to work and uh but uh but the uniflow it always works you know mm. well you can go back to the old standard vending with the exception of the speed up as you get closer to the end they always ran well you know we just we just that's one of the reasons why some of the harder maneuvers were at the end of the pattern was a to utilize the power of the speed up as it leaned out. I have a comment from Terry Mitchell. Maybe it's a question. He says, so on a metal uniflow tank, the uniflow tube is close to the pickup tube. If it's a clunk tank that moves where you 
where do you position the Uniflow tube? Middle oh. of the tank. Middle of the tank, yeah. And uh, the uh, on the Uniflow, I was taught to put it uh, halfway back in the tank. That's yeah. that's that's right. And then some people say three eighths from the end. So there's a well, no, that you you can put it you can put it halfway in the middle. Just bring it up right close to the to the inside of the wedge, and, yeah. and that's all exactly. it needs. It, you don't have to have it back there blowing bubbles into your fuel line. Yeah, you you can put it. It works just fine. About halfway. About it. Yeah, it's perfect. I agree. It, it works. It it'll work at three eighths back. But like they say, you will get bubbles in the fuel line, and it will cause you some erratic runs. If you bring it up to halfway, the bubbles before they get that far do what bubbles do: go to the top of the liquid and dissipate in the tank, and then yeah, they you don't get a bubble exactly at yeah. the fuel line or at the fuel pickup. Yeah, yeah. It just runs much smoother my, without it. That's why I put my Uniflow line on the outside of the baffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense, and it's worked very well. We got Dennis Adamison's sidekick saying uh, this is Brent Williams. He says electric lithium tank works great. Ha ha. Oh. <laughs> Until you blow a cell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah but, that's can do, but can you do a loop kill with uh with electric? Yes, you do it all the time. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very good. It's just a matter of programming, isn't it, Howard? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> and praying you that, don't have a cell go bad. Kind of that will tell you there's the a little more to it. <laughs> what was that, Jonathan? What was that, Jonathan? I say you can't refuel a lithium in the middle of a desert. <laughs> True. <laughs> The one thing about electric and glow, it doesn't matter which one you put your finger in, it's still going to hurt. Oh, yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> and you might stop the engine, but you won't stop the motor. That's right. No. Oh, my God. The more resistance it gets, the more amperage it puts in to make it know. continue its travel. Get away from that thing. The beauty of that is you done, if you stick your finger in a motor, you've done something really stupid because <laughs> you push the button and walk away. Yeah. You know, you're 30 seconds away when the motor starts spinning. Yeah, that's a so, good point. That would be very deliberate. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Phil, if it, if, if it seems impossible to do, believe me, someone will do Somebody it. Somebody will. Yep. I have no doubt in my mind of that. Hmm. Okay. Brent Williams says, Brent Williams says, tut, tut, Howard, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> tut, tut, Howard. I don't know what to call that other board that, that Howard uses along with the tut, but that's a cat's paw. I think he calls Move it a bycast. Don't you call it a bycast, uh, Howard? By, bycast. Uh, yeah. Uh, you people are talking about uh, uh, cats, uh, this and that. It's cats meow is the term. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. right. Cats meow. You're cats. right. I don't know, but that's what's going in my new my new plane, and it's. Uh, I hope I have better luck than I've had with this last one. Man, this last one's been a pistol, driving me nuts. Uh. Let's see, I got a quick share for everybody. All right, okay, go for All it. All right. Yeah, I promised everybody I was flying with today. This is my yeah. our flying crew from earlier oh, today. Oh my goodness! Good stuff. All right, we oh, got man. myself. This is Todd uh, Gunder, uh, Craig Gunder's brother, and oh. Larry Fruits, who has that perfect running engine you heard. All right. And of course, Wesley Dick. Wesley Dick. Wow, very uh, good. That's awesome. Yeah. Wesley's like he's still a surprise ever. Oh, he is. And there's the man in action. So. 90, 91 years old. We got it, got his flight in and everything like that. And it, it's really funny. I've been working with him the last few years. He's a, he starts off. So, oh, I don't know if I can fly this year. Says, I'm getting old. Whatever. Get him out. He's <laughs> flying my ringmaster right now. He whatever. can control the length of the run real easy. And he gets out there and he gets energized and, and everything That's like awesome. that. And we had it set for a three minute flight. And the last flight up, he says, I was, 
Because I was hope, wishing that thing would keep running. I was really having fun. So, <laughs> wow, ninety-one, wow. right? Ninety-one. So, that is. I hope to be doing that. That's it. I oh, hope I hope you to might be doing get into trouble with him. Do you think you might get into trouble with those guys? Oh. Looks like Bill Bomer made it in here. Okay. He's connected. One other thing I want to show you guys. Sure. Yeah. You're going to laugh this one right off. All right. It's for All real. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, he had set for a three minute flight. It's the last flight up. He says, How is. Oh, Bill, you probably need to close Bill. your other YouTube tab. Hey, Lenny. Wow, ninety-one, right? 91. Close your other YouTube tab. Hope to be doing that. I just muted you, uh, Bill Bomer. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, uh, Denny. Well, I was just going to talk about you know you guys. I'm sure, a lot of you guys use wing wingtip yeah. weights. Yeah. Make it big here. Brodak yeah. Wing, Brodak weights, right? All right. Yeah. They're seven grams a piece. All right. Okay. And very very functional and everything like that. And uh, since I, you know, and then I've even done things like this. I'm sure you guys all have. That's half of a weight, oh, yeah. basically. All right. Yeah. All right. But even then, uh, especially since I started flying Spectra lines, the uh, wingtip weight increments, you know, even going three and a half grams is oh, in some wow. cases too much. Interesting. And uh, Todd out there were, went and made me some more different weights. This is a stack of, wait for it, these are aluminum wingtip weights. Wow. Holy smoke. Oh, my God. Wow. 1.3 <laughs> grams per piece instead of 7 grams. Wow. Nice. Is that too big a step? No. How that's a, cool. How about a 70 milligram? Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, wait. Uh, still too big? 30 milligrams, baby. <laughs> wow. 30.03 grams. All right. So well, you're putting I, a lump of clay in your weight box, you know. Yuck. Clay falls <laughs> off. Inside the weight box. No. Uh, no that's not even the then, worst how part. much clay did you put in there? All right. Well, the worst part of it is the clay will melt and then you really got a mess. Plus, yeah, you don't but, know how much you know, is still there. I guess the point I'm getting at out. is, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, you can sit there and chip away at the weights and everything like that. But you're looking at exceedingly small amounts and stuff. Uh, the, the spectra lines I'm using weigh one fifth what uh, the weight steel. of uh, steel yeah. lines. OK. Right. And it yeah, they're a heck of a lot easier to well, take care of. Yeah. And so these, you know, the, the lines are lighter and lead is basically about one fourth one somewhere between one fourth and one fifth the density of of uh or aluminum is one fifth the, the density of lead there's something something kind of prime or you know, something special in that and you can handle just nice you know easy to handle pieces that fit, fill a little space and everything like that so that is neat cool. that is very neat wow, that's... yeah so todd made up a stack of it todd runs quarter midget race cars on the side and everything like that so he's Machine shop, got a lathe and got all the other cool stuff. He had kind of a little joking conversation about it the other day. And he says, well, how many you need? You know, he made me a stack of these. So uh, that is great. That is and great. Today I went through and I, I, I was, I had an excess tip weight problem and I walked the thing out, walked it on down. And the last <sighs> thing I used was I used one of my 1.3 gram weights. And I think I've got it. Just about as close as I can get it right now. Wow, that that's is pretty neat, Danny. You know, it, it was amazing how sensitive, you know, when you get an airplane that's flying well and stuff like that, it's amazing how sensitive it can, you know, it'll, it responds. The airplane will tell you if it's happy or not. I, I firmly believe that. And I could see, you know, I kept taking the weight out and, and uh, walking it down, walking down little steps, little steps. None of the flights are wasted. You know, excess tip weight really won't cost you a flight. It might look a little funny, but it won't cost you a flight. Uh, and just walked it down until I got rid of, I've got one spot, the last corner of the hourglass, I was getting a little bit of a wing dip. And now, so I might end up taking out, honest to God, I'm, I'm serious about that. I might end up taking out that last one gram piece that I put in there. So Wow. You know, Paul Walker in his article, the trim article, 
he talks yeah. about when a plane's out of trim, you know, you throw all kinds of weight at it. It doesn't make any difference. But once you get it in trim, then you can determine those small mm. incremental units of measure that you will can de detect. But when it's out of trim, you can't tell. Mm -hmm. And of course, Paul is the one that, you know, put me on to things like, you know, trimming the weight down. you know, you trim a corner off or something like that. Well, one problem with that, whoops, you put that in a weight box and then try to hold it in the middle of the box while you get the screw through it, you know, it just kind of sits there and flops around and it won't, you can't capture it with the screw down through the center of it and everything like that. Oh, I hate that deal. Yeah. And that, that fits the box just like the others. Right. So, yes. I like that. Wow. Get it close, fine tune, fine tune, fine tune. And man, life is good. What can I say? So, yeah, that is really cool. I really like that, that they all fit in the box and that hole be centralized. Mm -hmm. Well, I got all these airplanes made with Brodak wingtip weight boxes. And, you know, <laughs> I have a new, I have a new trick for that. What's that? I don't use the weights with the hole in the center anymore. I use the sticky weights, you know, the ones with the sticky yeah. stuff on the back. Uh, sure. What I do is I stick it sticky to the weights. sides of the box. Mm -hmm. Okay, I stick yeah. whatever amount I want to the sides of the box. Then what I do is I cut out a piece of foam that's um, the size of whatever's left. And I put a hole through the center of the foam with the screw down to it. And then the screw and the foam press the weights up against the side as well as the sticky stuff. Okay. And that way I never that way I don't have as much trouble trying to find the blind nut at the bottom of the box after going through the weights. Isn't that always fun? Yeah. yeah I, so I, it, it just makes it easier. And I've never had one come loose or anything because the foam is pushing them up against the sides of the box. You know, I don't, I don't know how the square, the square block of foam. I don't know how Gordon does it, but he has a little trick where he has a threaded uh, thing that comes up from the bottom of the box, and and he drills the holes in the weights a little bit overside, and they slip down on the outside of this, and then you just screw right into that little threaded thing. And, oh, and you, put nut, you, mean, you put a nut on that stud, you mean a nut? That's a good idea too. No, you could use he, something like a bicycle spoke head or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And and then he just <laughs> still comes in and you, it's right there where you, you don't have to fish around for it. Yeah, in other words, you just put the weights over top of the stem and yeah. then screw right into the center of the stem. That's a great yeah. idea. I like mm -hmm. that. You know, Sparky, uh, I don't watch every single Sparky show, but I wish I had time. But Sparky and Jonathan, they make a like a funnel in their weight box. So that, so that they're screwing, and they, and they also put this put a point on the screw that goes into the weight box, so we can find that funnel and find the threads. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's so another way. Right. Everybody has a trick. Yeah, yeah. Hey, anyway, I, like I just thought it's it's one of those you know it's one of been like you know a standard punchline. Oh, I'm using aluminum. I'm saving weight. I'm using aluminum tip weights. Well, I really am using uh, aluminum tip uh, weight. And they are. Right. Yes. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It does. Especially, yeah. like you said, the uh, spectral lines is one fifth the weight of the stainless steel. So you would need less weight. And it probably makes the plane even that much more sensitive. Yep. Let me uh, welcome Bill Bomer. Hey, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. You want to unmute yourself, Bill, and uh, tell us about yourself? Hi, everyone. Hi. It's uh, <clears throat> great to be here. I've been watching. Uh, faithfully for quite a while thank and, you very uh, much talk to Len, talk to Len a few times at different meetings and whatnot hey, Bill. but um always so much interesting stuff with by the experts here and um yeah so there's so many topics have come up and I thought oh man I could I could throw my two cents worth in there and sure. and uh so I figured it's time to to uh try and join in and um you know, awesome. try to be part of it. It's, it's excellent. Well, glad to have you. Very, yeah, very entertaining. I appreciate it, Bob. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so and much. Inform and, uh, of course, uh, informative, of course. I mean, I've been right. doing it a long time as well, like Lenny. As I say, uh, we hate have. To admit, as I say, to admit, hate to admit over probably 40 years here, but um, it's all good. We all started young. <laughs> and yes, we um, did. Yeah, so we've got, you know, it's always been uh, my primary interest. You know, you, you, as you said before, uh, Charles, you come and go a little bit sometimes, but 
um, you know, trying to get back into it pretty thick again. There are lots of um, kind of the master of unfinished projects. So, uh, <laughs> we all got that. Oh, yeah. But I think I have more unfinished than finished. But um, <clears throat> anyway, so it's all, uh, you know, it's, it's wherever you can kind of get focused on. But uh, as, I, as I mentioned, I'll end there a few times. We've got a, a windy Spitfire wing built and uh, nice. anxiously waiting to get that going someday and um, sooner than later. And I uh, got a Praxis that's ready for paint and uh, um, what else? An Epic, ready for paint. Oh, Zero Epic? Epic. Oh, yeah. man. That's a beautiful plane. Oh, it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. I was trying to, I've had a problem. My iPad wouldn't connect for some reason, but um, it wouldn't uh, let's see. Well, the Epic, I don't know if you can see it there. Oh, yeah, there we are. The Epic is right at the very top there. Very and, nice. Uh, below That's that, it. I've got my Kestrel uh, uh, that I flew for years and years. Did quite well with that. And the Jack Sheik's Knight. Um, All right. I see a score in there. Score, yep. The top flight score. Never had, never did much with it yet, but uh, it's got a Super Tiger 60, but hope to, to do something with it uh, this year. Um, the Praxis. And um, I've got a Sterling, uh, the old Sterling Spitfire that I always, oh, and there's my uh, Jack Sheik Spitfire. Nice. I'm a uh, kind of a Spitfire nut, <clears throat> and I've got a Brodac Spitfire kit up there too. And uh, yeah, so so many projects, and just uh, really, really, uh, you know, anxious to get them all done. But um, anyway, that's you know kind of where I'm at. Our as Lenny's uh, has brought up our flying, or a place to fly is a real issue right now in Canada. And uh, I don't actually live in Toronto anymore. I'm about a, an hour and a half um, east of it. So the only field that's available is quite a ways away now. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I, I actually reached out to a local RC club today and just got the word that they weren't interested in uh, supporting any control line. Um, they were the or they weren't? Pardon? They are or they're not? No, they're not, no. Oh, man. No, no they're lost. They've got to change... Yeah, they got to change all their approval and their their safety plan, and which is really unfortunate because it's you know it would have been ideal for me, but um, anyway, I'll have to try and plan some time down in the city at our approved flying field. That is such kind a pain. A, kind of a shame what's what's happened to it in Canada here, but yeah, it is we're stuck with it. I have a question yeah. for you. What engine are you going to put in the uh, Windy uh, Spitfire? Uh, Super Tiger 60. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm a Super Tiger 4660 guy. Okay. Um, that's cool. Just about everything I've got has a Super Tiger or an OS 35, which is excellent also for, uh, and, uh, and as I guess, as most of us collect a fair number of engines and, I've been doing a lot of that lately myself, but um, but I, I can't seem to get away from the Super Tiger. I never had much luck with the LAs or or FPs. They just seem to take off and go like hell. So, well, the FPs do. The LAs don't tend to as much. But they don't. They don't have that really good uh, two four break. I don't think. Do they? Well, I've never really heard different. Them. It's a softer break. It's a, it's a really yeah. soft. Off, it, yeah, I actually have a, I've actually got one from one of the guys in the club, uh, a phaser here. Phaser? I've never heard of that. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, the yeah. one from Ivan. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's right, from Ivan. And um, he had a LA-46 in it. Um, and, of course, I was going to try to convert to a Super Tiger, which is my, but it was going to need uh, so much carving and it was such a nice airplane. I didn't want to start cutting it up. Do you so have an LA? A, Pardon? Do you have an LA 46? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Actually, I have a new one, but I also borrowed one from John McFadden because I didn't okay. want to use my new one because it wouldn't be new anymore. So uh -huh. um, <laughs> I've got a, I've got a, I actually have all the LA engines. I've just never used them much. But um, okay. yeah, so I'm, I've got the LA in here now. 
Okay. See if we can. Okay. It would be a lot easier if I had my there iPad. Is. Oh yeah, there we are. And okay. uh, yeah, so it's I haven't flown it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I always I always liked that that airplane and never managed to get a kit. So I, uh, I like I your really apparatus that you're walking that you have your phaser on. Uh, can you uh, show us that? <laughs> That uh, jig you have in it that holds the plane like that against the bench. Can you show oh, me a little more of it? That well, is really what it all it is is um, because my this is my workshop in the back of my garage. It's um, so it's a bit small, but it's basically two broom handles. Let's see where are we here? Just drilled in the edge of the uh, the bench top. Can you, can you see cool. it? Good and, idea. Um, and uh, with some foam on them. Pipe wrap so on I want to work on yeah. it. It, um, it, yeah, it works really well. What a great you idea! It, uh, you can put it like this way, or you know, even you know, let's see, like you can just oh, it okay. When you when you that it, is uh, cool. Good idea. Limited, Bill. limited space, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's worked out quite well. I like that. And um, I'm just yeah. looking at some of your tools you have in there. I see a, was that a lathe back there, a wood lathe? Yeah. Yeah, I have a, uh, a small metal lathe and a wood lathe. I do some wood turn as well. So I've got the small uh, uh, metal lathe. I, don't, I haven't done a lot with it other than make uh, Venturi inserts. That's, <laughs> that's a cool. little project. It's handy that's to have. Awesome. For and sure. some woodwork, some wood working tools. Oh well, yeah, I have a Dick Mathis Satabria profile there. Uh, it's it's another unfinished project. There's a fuselage and uh, there's a wing. I built it basically for profile scale, but and it's got a three line bell crank in it. Very so cool. Another one to hopefully get get finished. Does that three line uh, bell crank work? Yeah. So is that uh, um, Philip? What was that for Bill? How does that three line bell crank work? How does it work? Yeah, um, is it a standard good, bell yeah, crank? Or? Yeah, you need the um, uh, well, it's a J. Roberts bell crank if you're familiar with, and it's just yeah. kind of like as we call it a monkey motion there with that. Uh, basically, you know, we'll move one lever to move the throttle without taking the tension off your your flight controls, yeah. and uh, it's, I've used it on a few. Uh, well, Lenny, you'll remember my big Focke-Wulf 190. Yes, I do. The cardboard Focke-Wulf. Yeah, for sure. In fact, where is that? Uh, oh, yeah, here's a picture of it here. Let's see. Uh, I can... is there it right? is. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was... Uh, that was a neat airplane. Reminds me of Wendy's shop having pictures on your wall. That is really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah it was, it that, was a, that was a fun airplane. I still have it. And, really, uh, you still have it? That's awesome. Oh yeah, I haven't flown it in years. But uh, what else have I got up there? My yeah, like, nice photographs. Howard Another, Peak. Uh, yeah, yeah. My uh, what else? Uh, yeah, another really good picture there of. Uh, oh no, that was the Pilat um Yeah, that Pilatus profile that uh, um, Jack uh, Jack took a picture of that. Took that picture. Cool. Um. Yeah, so a lot, you know, as I say, a lot, to, a lot to work on, and a lot of projects. I hope to get. And to that's do. nothing wrong with that, Bill. That's that's part of our hobby. I think that's uh, yeah. Why In we fact, enjoy I, it so much. with with all the discussion uh, on the group here with the uh, Pathfinder, I uh, I actually ordered up the. Uh, I got a set of ribs and plans for that, and um, sure. um, what else did I get? Oh, yeah, I've got the. With Keith and I don't I see he's not here tonight. Oh, I don't know why but, he's not here. Yeah, but I, I got really interested in the big job and I've been talking to him about it a fair bit uh, on email, <laughs> and I sent away for the plans for the big job, which is Good really in, intriguing. So I, I want to do that, and um, and I also he also uh, got me a copy of his um, that Westland Whirlwind uh, half a scale. Which oh, yeah. uh, was just amazing airplane, and um, so he sent me uh, um, a scanned copy of the plan. So I got it printed off for another uh, 
another thing to get going on uh, one of these days. But it was always when he brought that airplane out that night, my eyes just lit up. It's been one of my favorites for years, that airplane. But uh, yeah, so yeah, lots of, I guess that's that's probably the nickel tour. <laughs> what's, your, your best, what's your best flying airplane? Probably my most would be my, the, uh, the Kestrel. The Kestrel. Uh, what? The Kestrel. Kestrel. Yeah, that's a good airplane. Isn't that a Kestrel, the orange one up there. Yeah, is, uh, that was that built that a long design? time ago. Sorry? I say, isn't that a Steve Busso design? Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, that's right. So we built that to actually a friend of mine at the time. He, um, he built one too. And um, it was quite, you know, that one worked out really well for me, quite successful. I went down to a contest in uh, uh, Coxsackie, New York, years ago. And um, I actually got second in advance down there with it. Nice. And I uh, was really, really thrilled with that. And it was, uh, Wendy was there. Uh, that's when I met him and actually got my Spitfire plans. And um, yeah, that was a great trip and nice to, uh, to actually not crash or do something, do something dumb. And uh, which happens. So yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, I guess, yeah, that, that's probably my best one. I'm or most successful one. And then, um, you know, I'm looking forward to some of these, you know, like the spit the windy spitfire, the, the Epic, um, which is just, <laughs> it's a gorgeous airplane. So Bill, and, uh, yeah. Which was your worst one? <laughs> my worst one. Well, uh, let's see. I don't know. Uh, they're all good. I'd like to think, but um, you know um, we've hmm. all had one that we just assumed flying to the ground and we never do. Yeah, I know. Um, let's see, what would it be? Probably, probably some of my early half A efforts were, uh, yeah. were not so great. Um, I, I was lucky. My dad was very involved and helped a lot. He oh, didn't he fly. Was. He was uh, very involved with my brother. My brother used to do it a lot too with me when we were younger, but he um, he's kind of never, he kind of faded out of it. But, um, and my dad being a cabinet maker, we, you know, he was able to build some nice, uh, some nice stuff. Um, and uh, but we actually built a little, uh, scaled down a little Junkers uh, JU-1, I think it was. It was in a flying models magazine um and just built it like a little half egg thing and it uh, yeah it was it didn't work out so great but um but for my my big stuff it's always been fairly good the um the, uh, my first stunter was the um uh the jack sheik's uh, knight you probably are familiar with that the tea tail yeah yep. um and i probably should have built a nobler or something but um, I was just so enthralled with the knight, which is up there with the, the green wing. Let's see. Okay. I see the green wing. The tail there. You can see. If I, yeah. And it, I mean, yeah, it, I it was a great it. airplane. I loved it. It probably wasn't the greatest flying airplane, but, but you know, I just loved the look of it. It was just, uh, just gorgeous. I like and, how you have uh, your rack organizers. You have what one, two, three, four, oh. five, six, seven. I like the extensions. Eight nine planes yeah. in there. That's, my uh, rack only has like four planes because you have yours upside down, upright, and you yeah, just... they're they're stacked pretty tight. Um, in fact, this one, um, Lenny, you can see here. This one, uh, you need a pointer here. This one here's another cardboard one, Len. A hurricane. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. You guys probably probably saw in the magazines a guy named Chuck Felton. And he just, he built all these kind of scale airplanes out of cardboard. And uh, it was, they, some of them really looked amazing. And they were easy to build and cheap. Oh, you're the cardboard fly. king. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I, uh, I remember I that bunch. Fock Wolf really well. And I thought, how did he ever do that? That was wild. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, uh, what is that right there? It's uh, a shoe uh, chipmunk or what? No. 
What color is it? Daffel? I can't think of the warbird. Oh, it's um, warbird. It's a Sterling Spitfire. Spitfire. Oh no, Jack Sheeks, that's, isn't it? Well, that's my Jack, that's Jack, Jack Sheeks, Sheeks Spitfire. Uh, Spitfire. How does that fly? The Beamer. Yeah. How does it fly? A, yeah, an I beam. How does it fly, um, Bill? Good, really good. Yeah, I really, really like that airplane. I've debated over building one of those for years, and I think one of these days I'm going to get around to it. I really yeah, like I that just, plane. I just love that wing, I-beam elliptical wing. Yeah. And uh, my little Gillow Spitfire that I built when I was probably about 12 or 13. Wow. It, it didn't fly very good. The wing was so warped. It was on silk and aero gloss dope on that one. And, hey, uh, hey yeah, you still so, got it. Yeah. Yeah, we upgraded it from a um, uh, from an 049 to a, an, an OS09 because it was so heavy. But um, it just chased me around the field a few times, and then I didn't fly it too much after that. I like the Mosi too. That's that's pretty. Yeah, and the little, uh, my dad actually built that one. The little half a uh, let's see mosquito. That looks yeah. almost the same as Naomi's mosquito. I'll bring it up here. Hang on. Oh, All right. right. Oh. So, Bill, are you a, a scratch yeah. builder or are you a kit builder or both? Um, both primarily uh, build from plans. Very few kits, actually. Um, I do have, like, I, I always wanted that Sterling Spitfire kit, which I I went, I uh, always wanted one as a kid. Where's my, there's the rack up there. I've actually got about four of those kits now. Um, a word Sterling of warning Spitfire. on the Spitfire uh, from Sterling. Yeah. I, I worked with uh, Walter Umland when he did the uh, the Umland version of the oh. Spitfire for from right. Sterling. Yeah. And I, I as I drew the plans, I found out why a lot of people didn't like the way they flew. And it seemed like the guys, the, the, the better builders, had good flying ones. Some of the incidences are way off. So just oh. make sure your wing and your thrust line. Oh yeah, your incidences are correct. Oh, I actually, uh, John, I actually have that the plan from Walter Ullman uh, or Umlin. I I purchased that and the uh, Ringmaster Deluxe uh, a few years oh, ago. I came across them and when I saw the you know the re he redrew or I guess you redrew it, did you? I redrew I redrew the Spitfire plan and Pat oh. Johnson did the uh, super. The Ringmaster Imperial. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, the Spitfire, beautiful plans. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't mind building one from that plan. I wouldn't build another kit, but um, I just I just wanted to have one. Just one of those I think, things that... Yeah, I pretty want. much assure you that if you build from that plan, you'll have a pretty good chance if you, you know, again, oh, pay attention. That looks good, man. Instances. Oh, yeah. You'll have a pretty good chance. That looks great. That is pretty. Yeah, yeah. this was this was Naomi's half a skill mosquito. Oh, are they? Oh, it yeah, goes like a rock. It's it's a little bit heavy, but it goes like a rocket with two Norvell 061s in it. Oh, oh, great! It, it just rockets. Oh, cool. yeah. yeah. Well, that it's had, it's got some on. hanger. It's got some uh, flight damage though. It's had a few crashes. You can see the crack in the fuselage where it's been repaired and so forth. Oh. Right, right. Very but it's good. A, it's a little plane. It's a decent airplane, though. Yeah. I bet you the silhouette looks really nice from the center of the circle, I bet. Yeah, it does. It looks amazing from the center of the circle. It's really neat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Very nice. Thanks for getting so, that. Appreciate it. Very no nice. Plane, was it built from yeah. a plane? No. You know what? Actually, what Naomi and I did is we took... Uh, a scale drawing and we just scaled it to the size we wanted and then had them print it and then we just cut out the parts and made it that was okay. it yeah, uh, nice. and even though the, the wing what we did is we took two sheets of 3-8 balsa laminated them together carved the wing and then took them apart and and then cut the inside out like Hollowed out the inside, yeah, right. the yes. interesting. like a like a clamshell, and then glued them back together again. Interesting. Oh, very good. So that way we didn't have to deal with ribs and little wee pieces and stuff. This is all sheet balsa. 
It's an all sheet yeah. wing. Everything's sheeted. Mm. It's just light sheet wood, the whole airplane. That's very neat. Good. Very, very neat. neat. Hey, you guys, I'm going to shut down the live stream portion of our show. And um, well, I really enjoyed uh, tonight. And thank you so much, Bill, for coming in. And don't yeah. hesitate. Please come in more often. Um, I like having uh, you know people because uh, sometimes people can't come in for whatever reason. And if a new person comes in, the show continues on. You know, so it. Uh, yeah. And if you become a resident, that's fine too. We have plenty of residents, and I appreciate all of our residents <laughs> yeah. that we have. So, well, I, but it's yeah. a good show. Hopefully, you have a chance to do some flying, work in your shop, and then come back Friday and tell us all about it. And until then, tight winds and fair winds. Tight winds. Oh, no, tight winds. lines. Tight lines Hi, and fair winds. Fair winds and tight lines. You'll get I, it. Thank you. Thank you. Tight I, I winds tired. and fair lines, yeah. I've only, <laughs> said, I've only heard him say that about 300 times. And... I know. <laughs> fair winds and tight lines. Until then, I'll see you. See you Friday. Bye-bye. <laughs>